Good morning and welcome to AWS and DevOps World. I'm Kesh Kumar here. We are part of day three of our demos. First day we started with the cloud computing. Second day we are started with the AWS. Day three we are going with DevOps. As part of cloud computing, you learned about what's cloud computing. Then we started exploring to the vendor called AWS. And as a once you learn AWS, what you're going to do as a DevOps engineer that you're going to learn today. So let us focus step by step. And while I'm explaining this, I want to deal with a, a real use case, real time use case. I would like to go with the real time use case for this. So this is the agenda I would like to explain today. Let us go with the, a use case based understanding of what is a DevOps. As per this particular image, what you see here is there are two set of people, part of development, two set of people, part of operations. If you take a pro example of any project now, if you go with a real time with any project, the project is a combination of these many people. As part of the project, if you are running an IT services, IT related project, then you see product owner, scrum master, Scrum coach, DevOps team, a thing, but inside the DevOps team, you see developers, you see testing, and you see operations. Again, if you check, you have UI developer, you have backend developer, you have manual testing engineers, you have automation testing engineers. And if you check as part of operations, there we have Unix administrators, Linux administrators, Windows administrators. Then we have network engineers, cloud engineers, like yesterday we studied AWS, that means you are a cloud engineer. Next, DB admins, DBA developers, on-premise te team, operations team, security team. If you take an example of any project in today's world with any IT services or IT product-based services or service-based companies, this is all the project will looks like. I want to take this example and do a case study of one of the famous application which we use at least weekly once, which is Netflix. Netflix is part of OTT platform. As you know that it is online content delivery. We are streaming a lot of web services. We are streaming a lot of web services, movies that we are watching through OTT platform, through using application, website. Let's say this is an example of a Netflix project. How, how are we using Netflix? Like this, let me go up the case study base. By sitting at home, we are watching movies. How it is possible is Netflix is running on AWS. AWS is into cloud computing vendor. So Netflix is a company. They are, they are into OTT, online streaming platform. So this we are watching with the help of various devices. You see the TV here. You see uh, we have smartphones. We have tabs, we have iPads, we have laptops, we have desktops. Using these many different devices, you are accessing an application called Netflix. Once you access application, what you're trying to do, you are creating a one widget and you're logging in for one year subscription or one month subscription. Based on your current location, the moment you see, you'll be able to see the content based on your location. See, this is the content what you see when you visit a website called netflix.com. And here you see new releases, released in the past year. Okay, just give a minute.
just give a minute in offline uh, TV is disconnected. I'm just connecting it. Give us another two more minutes. I'm setting up the thing set for classroom. Yeah, let us continue now. We had a little issue at a classroom, like a screen is suddenly disappeared because of power, power issues. Now I reconnected it, let us continue. So what we were trying to understand here is, we are trying to understand about one of the platform, which is OTT platform, which is running on AWS. And uh, here I'm showing you something. If you see the first thing you're accessing with this, then you're connected uh, with the help of username and password. Then you see the first segment called new releases. You see released in the past year. Then you see continue watching some content. You know, I was watching. When I say I was, my family members, my kids, they are watching. It's the reason you see here. So sitting at home, we are watching all of this. And you see every time new content is coming up here. New content is coming up. And whatever you watch, even that is also is displaying. So this entire application is developed by whom? is a developer which developer a backend developer a front-end developer combination of developers they work on it who give the requirement a product owner who is a product owner who owns netflix there will be a PO will be the product owner of the netflix continuous requirement will be given to the development team development team will be working on it as part of the development team, as I explained, you have different people over here, UI developers, backend developer. The reason why I'm showing you these slides because some of you are not aware of different types of developers. So we have UI developers who develops the beautiful UI of Netflix. And there you are able to see the content, right? Content is streaming. Now you have seen one functionality here. What all I have, I have watched it. If I take an example of here, what all I myself I watched in the last two days or three days, you see, this logic is coming from backend. That means my as part of my user profile, this information is being stored in a database. Who stored it? A backend developer. How? Using a code. What kind of code they might be using? Python code. And this user interface is developed in which language? This is developed in React. React. The UI is React code. The backend is Python. And we have access to it. Our information is being stored into the database. And this application. Mm -hmm. Yes, please go ahead, Jyoti. Yeah, with the in the place of Python or only or Java will be it will be used and that. Okay, I'm taking an example of one of the language. Backend could be a .NET, Java, Go language, Python, could be any language would be. Okay, thank you. Okay. So I'm taking a use case study here. The user interface, what you see is a beautiful user interface is created with the help of React. It's 100% React application it is. And uh, you, then you have UI developers. Then this logic, right? Your sign in, sign up, and whatever the content you access, even in Netflix, if you observe, there are three different plans. Basic plan, HD, full HD. 
So this is called business logic. Who develops the business logic is called the backend developer. And who stores the data into the database? Backend developer. With the help of whom? A DBA administrator and DBA developer. How DBA admin developer will be helping means DBA admin will set up the database. DBA developer will be writing. He'll be creating schemas, tables, short procedures. All of this will be the, uh, doing by a developer, DBA developer, DBA admin setup. And this, where these are coming, they are coming from servers. Who configure the servers? System admin. What kind of system admins we have? Windows, Linux, and Unix. Who takes care of infrastructure progeny is called system administrator. And there will be a team called monitoring team. Who monitors it? They're called monitoring team. So if you see this particular application, it has various business logics and this entire thing is deployed. It is running from where? AWS. And you know that this application is serverless application. Initially they were with servers. Now they are going with microservice architecture, which is serverless architecture. Netflix Prime, everything is running on serverless architecture upon AWS. Even my website, which I showed you yesterday. Let me, if you want me to show you once again, I'll go over here and here we go. My web application is also coming from serverless. My website is secure. Do you see the lock here? My secure website it is. And our cloud binary website is coming from server. It's coming from server. This is coming from serverless. Why we are doing this? To show you example, I have deployed like this. Who deploy? I deployed. Who am I? I'm a DevOps engineer. Did I develop this code? No. Who developed this code? A UI developer, a backend developer. They worked on the code. Who am I? I'm a cloud engineer followed with DevOps. I'm a DevOps engineer. Cloud means, if you're a cloud engineer, means only you take care of cloud related tasks. You're not going to perform DevOps related tasks. So next level of cloud engineer is called DevOps. If you want to be a successful DevOps engineer, and if you want to work with some of the OTT platforms like this, I'm taking an example of OTT platform. You may be a part of a uh, banking domain, you may be part of uh, utility domain, you may be part of mining, you may be part of different domains are available in the market as part of IT itself. Everywhere DevOps engineering is needed. Why is needed? I'll tell you. Now, I'll ask a question to you all. What is the time now? It's 9.23, right? By 12 o'clock, you see some changes over here. Yes or no? As part of Netflix website, if you go to the application and log in, it's a refresh for every 15 minutes, for every 10 minutes, or for every one minute, you see some new content will be adding here. Who will be adding here? How the content is coming to the application? Yes, it's called CI CD pipeline. This is the loop. Now let me explain the loop with the help of diagrammatical way. This is the loop is being followed and deploy the code to the servers. Planning will be happening based on the business people. Planning will start for new content to release. Developers will be coding it. That need to be build it. That need to be testing it. That need to be releasing it. And once released, nothing but it's deployed. It's a live. So before it goes to the live, how many stages will be there? If you take an example of application called Netflix or any application in the world, before it goes to the live, it will have minimum of four stages. The moment developers code in, in their local machine, the moment they code out there, this application will be deployed to the dev environment first. The moment developer checks the code to the version control system, code will be built here. 
once the code is baked, the baked code should be scanned first for any vulnerabilities. After that, you keep the artifact for the audit purpose. Then you deploy to the uh, dev environment. Dev environment because developer need to test right what he has developed. So instead of developer test on his local machine, you're saying that hey, don't do it on your local machine because if you do it on your local machine, it doesn't work as part of the dev or production one. Let's say, let me show you that. that it doesn't work on production one. So that is the reason what you're doing. You're, there was a wall between developer and operations. They used to work in an isolated way. Separate, they used to work separate. There's, there is a wall between these two people. This wall has been removed in the year of 2008. That means DevOps is introduced in 2008. Before that also DevOps was there, but they were working in separate isolated environment, no way connected with operations team. Why in 2008 only this era started? Because as, as we studied yesterday, AWS was started the journey 2006. With the three services, they started the journey. They see whenever somebody release something, we take advantage of it, right? So same thing was started in the 2008. Before that also, there was a development team, there is a operations team, but they used to work separately, no connection between both the teams. Even developers used to follow SDLC, software development life cycle, which is called they used to follow waterfall methodology. Waterfall means once a requirement is given to somebody, he will check your requirement. After checking your requirement, he will give it, he'll be giving a timelines saying that I will be delivering your product on so and so date, so and so time. Until then, please don't give me any requirement, any modifications. Why? You are checking the feasibility of the requirement is given. You are be doing a requirement analysis, designing it, coding it, testing it, and maintenance. The overall duration of this will be approximately 30 days to 90 days between. If you want to release a new functionality as part of Netflix or any application, product owner want to release something. Developers are ready to do it. Operations are going to deploy this into the production. But how long this will take? Because of separate teams, it is taking 30 days to 90 days. New functionality release in the market. So this has been removed by removing the waterfall methodology as well. In place of water, waterfall methodology, Agile came into the picture. Agile. Let me take you to the Agile diagram. Agile and DevOps works in hand in hand. As I mentioned, developers and operations had there is a wall. This wall has been removed with the help of PI and CD pipeline, nothing but a DevOps. This loop is created because of two things. One is DevOps culture. Second thing is SDLC, software development lifecycle. As part of it, Agile is the one which you are implementing. Waterfall is removed. Why waterfall is removed? Once you take the requirement, you are giving a commitment and you are not ready for the change until your commitment is delivered. That is a failure model. Whenever we have some failure model, we work on it and we come up with a better module model, right? So same thing has done Agile people. They came up with Agile model. Agile and DevOps work in hand hand. Then only you will see the results. If you say I'm a DevOps engineer, but I don't follow SDLC Agile frameworks, then you are not a DevOps engineer. I'm a cloud engineer. I use without Agile. No, Agile is everywhere. Even in our Indian marriage system, also Agile is there. Do you know how? We know right wet day. Before wet day, you plan everything. But you will not miss the wet day. At any cost, you are committing for the wet day. Before that, you prioritize all the tasks. You do all your tasks. 
some see let's say you plan for 100 tasks for wet day for example uh, may 30th is a wet day you plan by sitting with your family members you, you listed 100 tasks what you do is this 100 tasks one person will be handled or split it to the different people and every progress will be checked daily basis weekly basis finally before it goes to the wet day you may come you may complete this at least 60 percent six plus but at least 60 percent you're completing it right but this happens anyway this happens anyway that is the what agility is all about agility speed collaboratively you have to work to deliver the requirement in a chunks wise rather you deliver whole idea in one go you are developing the idea in a chunks wise small piece wise you develop the small piece of code and you ask testing team to test it. You ask product, uh, product owner to check your idea. You have given me some idea. I developed it. Could you please validate and let me know? Are we at the same page? So end of the day, this person will be very happy. Why is happy? His idea is getting it, converting into the materialistic. And that too, change wise. That means by tomorrow, you might get some new requirement on the same functionality. You want to add some feature changes or logo change or functionality change. Or for example, if I take an example of Netflix itself. <clears throat> if I take an example of Netflix here, now the product owner want to change some functionality here. How many functionalities you want to change? By afternoon, you want to change some functionality on the uh, UI because you want to release new uh, movie. So, who will give the requirement? Product owner is the one who gives the requirement to the development team. PO will give the requirement to the uh, Scrum Master. Scrum Master will discuss with the DevOps team. DevOps team is the one who works on it. In the DevOps team, who are there? Developers will be there, QA will be there, and Ops will be there. And developer will be only focusing on developing. So product owner has given the requirement to him. He has given the check the DevOps team availability and team started working on it. He has given 10 requirements. By afternoon, I want two requirements. So we will be able to deliver if you follow agile way of working plus DevOps. Why DevOps? Automation. Why DevOps means automation? What you do automation is his idea will be converted into materialize only with the help of DevOps engineers like this. His idea will be deployed by afternoon. Before it goes to the afternoon, first copy will be released to the business people. Before we go to any promotion, any kind of thing, before we do something, we take a preview with, right? Any work if you take. Same thing goes here. Here, a dev team is there. Requirement has taken the uh, taken by the development team. They worked on the local machine. They completed the changes to the version control system that is being executed on the central machine called Jenkins. And code has been scanned. The code which is pushed by the developer, code also should be scanned properly. Without scanning code, you cannot work on it. Then you're keeping the artifact for the reference. Then you're doing the deployment. So this copy is for development purpose. Next copy is for Q engineer purpose. Q engineer should do the functional testing end to end. Next acceptance. This is the copy is given to the product owner. Product owner will check at this requirement. Okay, I have given 10 requirements. In that I afternoon, I said two requirements. Who did developers team? And it is working fine. Then you will say, I approve. Please go to the production at 11.59 a.m. 12 o'clock, it will be available in the Netflix application. This entire servers you see, right? This entire logic flow is developed by a DevOps engineer. Or where are you involved means this entire flow is orchestrated, orchestrated by a, develop, a DevOps engineer. Am I going to code it? No, you're not going to do any coding. You are going to uh, set up this version control system. Like this is an example I'll give you.
you are going to use different tools like this. I can take an example of here or in all below examples. We as a DevOps engineers will help the developers to code in GitHub. We will help the developers and entire operations team to do a planning part of Jira. To lesson learns, any documentation should be maintained in the conference. Who will take care of GitHub? We as a DevOps engineer, Jira, conference. These are productivity tools. Next, code should be built. It. Where do you build it? On Jenkins. Who will set up the Jenkins server? DevOps engineer. Instead of you are telling developer, hey, don't execute on your local machine, please don't do this. Do it in a centralized machine using one of the build tool. While you're doing, you'll be doing unit testing. Once unit testing is completed, you do functional testing by a QA engineer using Selenium tool. Who will set up all this? DevOps engineer is the one who set up. That means you are working with the tools. You are working with the operating system. You are working with the cloud computing called AWS. You are using third party tools. You are using cloud native tools to orchestrate, nothing but to automate. Then finally, it should be tested. Once it is tested, it should be goes to release. As part of release, you will be releasing to the AWS maybe as a Docker container, maybe as an EC2 instance. Then once it is deployed, it's called operation. You have to operate it. Then you have to monitor it. Using any one of the monitoring tool, you will be continuously monitoring. This loop is continuous. This entire loop, these tools should be aware by a DevOps engineer. So you are going to focus. Yes, uh, Hassan, please go ahead. Sorry, uh, like uh, the tools, what we have, Git, Maven, uh, Jenkins, Ansible, Docker, and uh, Kubernetes. Yeah. So these are the tools uh, which have different, different functionality, right? Like yeah. uh, Jenkins can't be used for build purpose. Yes. Okay. Uh, Jenkins functionality is, I mean, for releasing, it will take care. So. What I am I want to ask is like every tools have different functionality. Right? Yes, yes. As part of Jenkins, we orchestrate means we bake the code. Building is happening on Jenkins. Once you give the input to any job, you will get output. The output will be an artifact. That artifact will be deployed to the AWS as a Docker container or EC2 instance or this container has Kubernetes cluster. You run this container on Kubernetes cluster. While you are deploying this, you use Ansible to install some softwares. Then finally it is deployed, means you use one of the monitoring tool, any one of the monitoring tool to monitor your infrastructure. So we as a DevOps engineers will be you working with a different tools like this. We follow Agile, first point is we follow Agile, we are DevOps engineers. We follow way of working. This is called way of working. And this is called continuous integration. This is called continuous testing. This is called continuous delivery. We are focused more on CI and CD pipelines. Continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployments. The, as part of this entire flow, we will be setting up the tools. We will be uh, monitoring them. We will be troubleshooting them. We will be updating, upgrading, Sometimes you decommission it. Sometimes you go with a new infrastructure, maybe serverless infrastructure. So like this, from code commit to code deploy, we play a vital role. Here is only developer you see who we are. We are a DevOps engineers. We will introduce version control system. We will introduce Sonar Cube. We will introduce build. Uh, build tool will be uh, you know, updated by a developer. He will tell, this is Java language. Please go with it. And Gradle or Marvin. If it is Python developer, you go with the pip command. So he is the one who gives some insights on building tools. Next, artifact management. Next, infrastructure should be provisioned to Terraform, where upon the cloud computing. You may provision Kubernetes cluster, you may provision simple EC2 instance along with the load balances. This entire infrastructure will be provisioned. CI CD pipelines are created by a DevOps engineer. 
this is a CI and CD pipeline, continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployment. Until you see the production environment, we are the responsible persons. That's the reason we don't code. We deal with the tools. We deal with the operating systems. We deal with the cloud computing vendors. We work very closely with the various people. We work with the UI developers. We work with the backend developers. We work with the QA engineers. As part of QA, we have manual engineers. We have automation engineers, operations team, different ops teams we have. You as a DevOps engineer, you are a special role it is. You play all this story. So Netflix is going with at least 50 to 100 deployments per day. You know that? They are releasing 50 to 100 movies per day in all the languages, right? It's not like one language. They are across the globe. See, they are across the globe. The red color means Netflix is everywhere. Netflix is running from AWS. Prime is running from AWS. So they are into OTT platform. So for their purpose, for uh, OTT application purpose, what kind of services they are using from AWS? You see, EC2, S3, this is operating systems. This is storage. Uh, they are using big data, Hadoop, Hadoop tools. They are using Cassandra tools. They are using database tools. They are using Cassandra again. Again, they're using Cassandra tools. These are the some of the tools they are using, services they are using from AWS. And who set up this entire uh, thing? DevOps engineer. Who will give the architecture design? Architecture design is given by the architect. Based on the architecture design only, a DevOps engineer will implement. If you see here, EC2 instances. If new movie released means, that content is deployed to the EC2 instances. We are accessing the uh, Netflix using different devices. Our content is coming from so many AWS services. So many AWS, SQS, load balancer, EC2, databases, APIs, EBS, memory, mem cache, APIs, components. A lot of things you have, like, you know, um, now, since it is your day three, if I show you all this, you may not be understanding, but what I want to summarize here is we as a DevOps engineer, we work upon on-premise data centers, we work upon cloud computing platforms. Our work is to work very closely with various stakeholders, take their requirement, understand the requirement, start delivering by following the rituals. You need to follow the, follow the rituals. What rituals you have to follow? Agile and Scrum rituals you need to follow. Then only you will be able to deliver the product. Without following the, you know, let's say for example, you decided to learn AWS and DevOps. And without joining a specific place with any trainer or any organization, if you start learning from YouTube, how you will be able to learn it? In YouTube videos, a lot of content will be there. But that is not a sequence, right? So that's the reason what we do. We go with the sequence-based learning. So here, when you are delivering the things, you should know first way of working that is called agile way of working. There you have a lot of rituals. Rituals are nothing but meetings. You follow the meetings to work on the given requirement. So a DevOps and Agile works in hand in hand. Without Agile, DevOps is not there. Without DevOps, Agile is not there. Under Agile, you have various frameworks to do all this work, to provision infrastructure on AWS. That infrastructure could be a serverless. This is an example of, let me take an example of example two here. This is example of AWS cloud native. As I mentioned, right, cloud binary application is coming from EC2 instance. This is an example of cloud binary application. And this one is, on-premises application. This is, if you're working with on-premises, this will be an example of on-premises, this entire architecture. There is one more example, serverless example, my application, my website, what you see is called my, this is my web, web application is coming from AWS and that is serverless application. So 
what I'm trying to show you with these three project use cases is we as a DevOps engineers work upon the requirements that could be on the cloud or that could be part of on-premises. Upon the cloud itself, there you have various things, server-based, serverless, or Kubernetes-based, microservice architecture. We, are, we should be in a position to deploy the infrastructure part of AWS. That could be a one-tier architecture, that could be a two-tier architecture, or could be a three-tier architecture. Like, like this, you will be provisioning servers, web servers, app servers, database server. You only have web layer. This is called one-tier architecture. If you have uh, web and DB, then it is called two-tier architecture. Let's say you have three, three tier. This means three tier architecture. First one is a static website. Second one is a business logic. Third one is nothing but obviously business logic means database is involved. This is an example of Netflix application. First, you open a Netflix. It will not ask you username and uh, password to access. It will just show you the content that is coming from a static website. It is coming from this servers, this web servers. Once you provide username and password, your information is validated here by your application server. Then you will be landed to your home page. That is the reason you are able to see your content over here. You see here? That's the reason it's showing. I, as a Kesha Pumari, have watched this many movies. It is coming from database. Now you are part of application this log this is coming from uh, business logic right it's application so this is three tier architecture the three tier architecture could be server based serverless depends on again so in order to do all this as i explained so many things here no need to get confused so to become a devops engineer what all i should look know or one should know if they want to start as a devops engineers First one is a way of working, which is called software development lifecycle. Second one is about you are going to help the developers in terms of versionizing their code. Fourth one, you'll be work. Sorry, third one, you'll be working with the operating systems, Windows, Linux. You have to provision. You have to monitor. You'll be monitoring with the help of monitoring tools. When you provision something, you are responsible to monitor. When you provision something, you are responsible to do troubleshooting you have to do troubleshooting and where do you provision could be on aws could be on azure could be on gcp and it could be anywhere and you will be doing automation using jenkins you may use jenkins or you may use aws cloud native tool called code build or code pipeline in place of jenkins next you have to do a code scan Whatever the developer gives the code, you should not use deploy directly to the dev environment. First, you need to scan it for the vulnerabilities, bugs, or for the duplications. Next, you are going to keep the one reference copy for audit purpose in binary repositories. And you'll be working with, when I say, here I said, you'll be provisioning operating systems. On this operating system, what you're going to do? Install web servers, installing app servers, installing DB servers, the services. While you're doing this, you have to do troubleshoot. You have to document it. Where, you, where do you document? As part of Confluence or any platform variable, Google Drive, you document it, example. So next you'll be working with, once you know how to work with operating system, next level is about working with the containers. Called Docker. Docker is the name of the company. They are into containers. And Kubernetes is from Google. Now it is with CNCF. Again, this is open source board. It is again from Google itself. Next, as I mentioned, you're going to provision operating systems on AWS or Azure. You're not going to do manually. You're going to do automation. That is possible with Terraform. Terraform. Whatever you provision, you have to monitor. So while you're doing all this, you'll be working with Windows. If it is Windows means, you'll be working with a PowerShell script. If it is a Linux means, a shell script. 
next level if you want to scale up you have learned all this you are doing well there is a room for learning of python if you learn and do some tweaks manually and fit into automation that is extracurricular activity so these are the things which one should know or if you are planning to do a, a devops engineer job these are the things which are needed and when you when you know all this uh, just give me a minute when you know all this your day to day work will be like this monitoring working on incident management infrastructure provisioning on aws or on premises working with a uh, cicd tools like github jenkins and rcube jfrog tomcat and you'll be creating CI/CD pipelines. Then you'll doing you'll be doing automation, nothing but doing a deployment, CI/CD pipeline deployment. Obviously, you deploy the code to the operating systems. You do patch activities. Then you will be doing the system analysis. When there is an issue, you do a troubleshooting. Incident manage incident will be created. You will be doing troubleshooting. The system analysis. Then you provide a solution. Your lesson learns will be documented as part of conference then productivity tools jira access management conference access management github access management sonar tube access ma management jenkins access management setup monitoring maintenance and everything you have to take care of next if as you're setting up everything if there are any vulnerabilities you have to fix it may, may be part of operating system maybe part of application you have to fix it how do you fix it there is a team, they will share you the step-by-step -step document by looking at the step-by-step -step document, you have to resolve it. It's not a rocket science. And for everything, way of working is mandatory. So your typical day of a DevOps engineer will be for two weeks, will be like this. Two weeks. Why am I saying two weeks means it it because we have we follow. SDLC, part of SDLC, Agile. If you're going with Agile, then, then you should go with a framework called Scrum. If you're going with the Scrum, it has two parts. You can go with a two-week sprint or four-week sprint. Sprint. A sprint duration could be two weeks or four weeks. Let's say project A decided to go with a two-week sprint. If they are going with a two-week sprint, then you are a DevOps engineer. You are part of it. So you are every 10 days once, your activities will be different. Day-to-day -day activities will be different. Slide. Your day one of your sprint, two-week sprint, you will be part of sprint planning. Your day two to day nine, every day daily stand-up will be there for 15 minutes. Here you discuss about what I was doing yesterday, what am I doing now, are there any problems. Next, only on day 10, you will see review. What is review means? As part of day one, you accepted, you are working 10 days. In this 10 days, you accepted 10 tasks. 10 tasks you accepted. But at day 10, you only delivered 6. Remaining 4 are not delivered. For six delivered one, you give a demonstration here. Review. Remaining four are not delivered, right? You go to the 11th day, which is called retrospection. There is a story comes. You accepted 10. You're working for 10 days. You accepted 10 tasks. And you only delivered six. Four are not delivered. Why? Why have you not delivered it? Please make sure that from next sprint onwards, plan it well. Is it your planning issue? Is it your access related issue? Is it somebody team dependency? That will be discussed during the ret retrospection. Next, end the sprint, end current sprint, and start again in your sprint. Day one starts. All the starts. Again, it repeats for every two weeks like this. 20, 12 months means 24 sprints. If you're going to the four way sprint, 12 sprints. Like that. You follow these rituals. Everybody should uh, follow that. They definitely they, you'll be following it, and you'll be doing this. This will be a nine hour, eight hours of job, nine a.m. daily scrum. 
10 o'clock. This is only for 10 days once, day one, planning, infrastructure management, sprint review, 11th, 10th day, retrospection, 11th, 10th day, 9th or 10th day. Next, monitoring, automation, learning. This typically is on only once in a two weeks. But how your day will be basically is like this. The eight hours will be divided like this. Nine o'clock planning and collaboration along with the daily standup will be there. 10 o'clock infrastructure management. 11 o'clock continuous integration and delivery. Monitoring and logging in. Security and compliance. Collaboration, communication, automation. Then learning and profession development. This is how it, your day will be. As a DevOps engineer, whether you may be part of any domain, and whether it could be OTT platform domains, banking domain, you are supposed to follow the rituals of Agile. You have to follow the rituals. Then only you will be able to deliver the products timely to your business people, product owner. This is the overall story of DevOps. And after learning this, after knowing all this, where can I see myself? What kind of opportunities I will have? Or what will be my salary scale will be wins? This will be your pay scale as per US standards. If you're a junior developer, the DevOps engineer, then 431000 per month in US, not in India, in US. If you're a coordinator, this one. If you're a senior DevOps engineer, you are supposed to get this as a salary per month. You are getting it in US, you are getting it. Which is one crore in US, uh, in India. So this is the opportunity you have. You may be as an only cloud engineer or you may be as a DevOps engineer. After learning this course, based on your level of understanding, for first one year, two years, you may be a work as an only cloud engineer. Once you start exploring yourself and to all other things, once you start gaining the certifications from AWS, then you may go as a DevOps. It's up to you how you want to uh, route your, even sometimes nothing will be in your hands according to your project you have to work. That time you cannot say, I don't know this. You have to, they, see, they will not ask you to develop a code. First thing I'm saying, they will not ask you to develop a code that they will ask you to learn things and do it as a as part of this entire CACD pipelines, but not programming. If you say, if they, they ask you to do a, a application development, that means they are not following uh, the actual way of working as a DevOps engineer. They don't know the definition of DevOps engineer. So I hope it's clear to everybody. If you have any questions, now I'm open for questions. Let's go with the questions. Now, before I go with the question, one minute. Here we go. Let us continue with the queries.